<laughs> right, welcome back. Um, well, let's pick up from where we stop. But uh, I just thought before that, uh, I, just thought of, I suddenly just thought of this. I thought I'd ask each one of us. So how many of us uh, have are leading a cell group or you have led a cell group before? Uh, you know, there was some kind of a problem in the cell group. Uh, how did you handle it? What did you do uh, to, you know, resolve that uh, issue? Uh, maybe uh, if anyone here would like to share, if, if you have any thoughts on that, um, how did you share? Because, you know, as a, you know, I, I, I'm the life group. So right now I'm the life group coordinator. I haven't really come across, praise God for that, uh, any problems in life groups, praise God for that. Uh, but how would you and I, you know, uh, I love what the Apostle Paul uh, does to the church in Corinth, and we studied that as well last semester, right? He dealt with the problems, right? All the problems in Corinth, he didn't shy away from it, but he dealt with it. He gave them, uh, you know, answers to their questions. He help them to get back on their feet so i just thought maybe some of us can share uh, you know anything that happened and how you were able to overcome it uh, how you were able to resolve those conflicts uh, anyone would like to share any any problem so uh, if there was an issue in your cell group how or even if you were mentoring somebody how did you resolve that conflict or how are you working in that person even if you're you know working with them right now uh, just so that all of us can learn together so if there were no problems wonderful you can move on uh, but i just thought i'll leave this open yeah i i can share uh, uh, about two things which are kind of uh, overall they're not like major problems of, with the people or anything but uh, this is in the way we organize the cell group uh, this is something that i have learned one is uh, managing the time what happens is like when uh, uh, when everybody comes in we have we usually start with how was your week uh, or, uh, how are things and uh, we go one by one everybody shares and then we share the word and uh, like worship word and then we uh, end with a prayer now what i observed is uh, uh, very unusually the the most time taking thing is like <laughs> asking everybody how the week was and the conversations go on because uh, there is there are a lot of inquiries which happen like oh what what happened to that what happened to this and it's like one by one and by the time we go to the word and by the time we go to the prayer it's already late and people would want to leave so what i personally did was i actually switched it it, it looked a little odd not to ask uh, about the week uh, when they come in but uh, i told them like you know we meet at 7 30 and we start with the word like we pray we start with the word and then uh, we we complete with a prayer and then we catch up we do the fellowship so that's one thing and second thing is uh, uh, at one point of time uh, we had about like 10 people coming in and uh, everybody had a lot of prayer requests uh, and we we used to collect all the prayer requests and we used to assign it to like people uh, so you pray for this person you pray for this person and then four of four or five of them and it and that that used to take a lot of time mm -hmm. so to manage that i have split so, so if there are too many prayer requests we split into groups like if we have 10 of them like i will say okay three groups uh, you, you all three parallelly pray for uh, the requests so that uh, in instead of 15 minutes in five minutes you still pray for all the requests but in three different groups yeah perfect thank you so much tarun and thank you so much for sharing that tarun yes very very genuine uh, you know it, it's not a big problem it's not like oh what you know we have to close down or some spiritual problem but it is something Right, and uh, what Tarun did was really good, right? Managing, and it's a genuine thing, right? So people come, they start talking and talking and talking. And you can't say, hey, don't talk, don't talk, wait, we have to start. Uh, but the wise thing was, hey, okay, so this is what's happening. Let me, let's start with the worship word. 
And then they can sit 9, 30, 10, whatever time they would like to. Eventually, they'll have to go home. So, uh, so you know, uh, that that's good. That's wonderful. Yeah. And again, managing prayer requests, getting into groups, praying. Now, uh, you know, probably there are 12 of them sitting, and each person is giving like one or two prayer requests. And then we say, okay, can you lead these two prayer requests? And then, you know, uh, so imagine if each person gives two prayer requests, you have 24 prayer requests. Uh, so wise thing, break into groups, hey, just pray for each other. Uh, another thing that we can do as cell group leaders is tell them, pray small prayers. Right? It's not like we have to pray big prayers and only those long prayers with big words God answers. You can tell them. Hey, just pray for that specific need. If they say, pray for a job, don't start praying for you know. Uh, thank you for his life, for his for what he is doing all these years. You know, we just lift up this person uh, and this brother into your hands, even as he's you know looking out for a job. You will open the right door. Simple, two minute prayers, and God is a God who answers those. Right? We don't have to feel bad by praying those small prayers. It's just that we are trying to be more effective in the cell group. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sarun. Wonderful, wonderful for sharing. Any anyone else would like to share? Anyone else? Would like uh, yes, Pastor. Yes. I'd like to uh, just um, ask you ask a question sure. with regards to the uh, the way the cell group is um, is uh, organized with by 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 way of you know uh, the the age uh, you know. Uh, differences um, in the group itself so for example uh, um, you know uh, if you say 12 people in a cell group and um, some of the uh, families have um, children who are adults you know above 21 or even above 18 for example and um, there are some whose children are much younger for example and um, therefore therefore they will you know, not really be part of the core you know, uh, 12, uh, 12 member cell group. So in that in that instance, there is uh, there are people um, who are maybe middle aged or even older, and there are also some who are um, uh, you know in the um, uh, as taking a point from Pastor Ashish's uh, last um, class. You know, they are they are part of the Gen Z. Which is, you know, they are in their twenties. So um, there are a variety of topics which will which will be um, viewed and uh, you know addressed and also responded differently. And um, uh, just wanted to understand, you know, in the, just to confirm that, you know, that having adult um, children, they will be part of that group. So they'll be part of the twelve and um, uh, core members and. Um, uh, you know how that sort of how how is that kind of dynamics of you know the of that difference between the age groups how how is that managed? Yeah, thank you so much, Christopher. Uh, very very genuine question. Something that we at APC are uh, you know working towards to help uh, you know fill these gaps in the church, right? Especially when it comes to uh, you know we have the teens, we have the youth, and then we have. Uh, uh, you know those who are single women or divorced women and so these are few of course we have teen church and all of that now one of the things that we talked about is I, I'll, I'll answer your question i just wanted to uh, you know, just share about this as well i'll answer your question christopher regarding teens you know we were talking about this how do we do it now if we start a teen cell group now teens may not be able to travel alone to a cell group Right. You need their parents to drop them, pick them up. That's one thing. And we have youth cell groups, right? So, so we have youth boys, youth girls. And especially when it comes to a family, right? Now the family has, one family has a 20-year-old boy and a nine, or a 17-year-old and a 17-year-old. And this other family is coming with, you know, a five-year-old and an eight-year-old. Right. So basically, I'm just uh, trying to, you know, put a paint a picture here. So Christopher's question was, how will, you know, we 
the adults, the 20 year old and the 17 year old may or 18 year old will be with the adult group. Now there are all families there. How do we meet their needs? Especially, you know, like the Gen Z, they have their own challenges. Now the person, a uh, youth there, the 20 year old cannot, most probably won't lift up their hands and say, hey, I have this problem. Uh, can somebody help me? Nine out of 10 times, that's not gonna happen. So Christopher, one of the best things we try to do is firstly, we try to, uh, it's happened, you know, there's a there's a cell group that just recently uh, we started in Bangalore. And this couple said we have a 20 year old and a, uh, I think a 15 year old. So immediately I told this couple, see, your 20 year old, send him to the youth life group. Immediately I said that. Right? Now he can be part of it, part of your cell group right but he must also be part of the youth group uh, a youth boys group now if the timings are clashing i very clearly said to the parents encourage him now again it's the parents who make the decision but i said encourage him to join the youth boys group right? because that's where he can grow right now the parents may want the boy to be there with them right uh, but all we can do is we can encourage that you know of course, you know, being with the youth, a youth boy, being with people of his age uh, will make more sense. Right? They're going to talk about topics and, you know, questions are going to be related to something around them. Now, imagine this 20 year old sitting there and you know, uh, they're talking about marriage. He's like, oh man, marriage, something I'm not going to even think of right now. So he's going to be sitting there like, oh, when is this meeting going to get over? Right? Uh, and you can't blame him. Because we, we have to blame the, uh, I mean, you can't even blame the topic because the topic is that. Uh, so to help that, we are trying our best to start as many youth boys, youth girls life group. Now, another thing that happened was there was this, we have a youth girls life group. Now, she's a wonderful, uh, you know, very fervent in the Lord, grew up in children's church and, <clears throat> you know, just very strong in the Lord, very, very strong in the Lord, very committed. Um, and you know, uh, has been attending a lot of these youth meetings, our uh, weekend schools, all of it. And so we said, you can, you are, you can be a life group. So she's a life group. So now she's doing her internship. She's just finished her study. She's doing her internship. But the cell group member, the girls who come to a cell group, all are working professionals. And so she called me and she said, you know, uh, Pastor, this is the thing. I, I'm a student i'm intern but the, sometimes they ask questions like uh you know what do i do in this uh, you know the questions are more workplace oriented so she was feeling very bad she was saying uh, am i equipped enough to be a leader in this cell group so the first thing that i said to her was you are equipped enough right in the word you are equipped enough right it's just that you may not know much about the corporate sector because you haven't joined there but doesn't mean you're not an effective leader right so you can learn from them. But what I can also do is we are planning to start some corporate groups, workplace professional groups. And I think Tarun was, uh, uh, you know, when he was in here, he helped us with these corporate groups. And uh, we were planning to start some more of these corporate groups. So I said, when we start some of these corporate groups, they can also attend that, right? But as of now, you are the leader. If you don't know the answer, just say, I don't know, I haven't. You know, everyone know that you are not working, uh, but you are the leader of the group. Uh, just because you don't know one thing doesn't mean you don't know the others, right? Uh, so, yes, there are those gaps, Christopher, um, and we are trying our best to start as many as we can so that these gaps can be filled. Now, sometimes it's even uh, you know the location, right? Uh, so if we look at uh, our city. We have quite a few life groups in north, south, east, but we have very less life groups in west of Bangalore. Right? Maybe because there are very few people living that side of Bangalore, right? And second reason, and another place would be central. Now, a lot of there are a lot of folks at central, you know, the main city, the heart of the city, uh, but we haven't been able to start like a cell group there. But this is something that we are looking at. Right, so there are there are certain gaps. Uh, so we are working towards that, uh, Christopher. Uh, trying trying our best. We are planning, you know, twenty three. We are planning to start some teen 
life groups uh, some more as many as possible youth life groups boys and girls uh, to meet uh, the needs of the youth and also women's life groups right because uh, men and women separately right uh, separate life groups uh, so yeah so i hope that answers your question christopher oh uh, yes uh, i mean just something to add is that uh, i think it still uh, you know uh, you know helps to uh, you know to have um, the adult uh, you know youth with the, in that in that in that uh, in that life group yeah. to give that give a fresh perspective to you know even some topics like like marriage and uh, you yeah. know yeah. because at the end of the day uh, you know they are the, you know they are the, the families are coming together as, as a yes. unit and uh, they are uh, taking back uh, you know um, inputs coming in out of the self groups and then you know into their household and uh, you know um, they're not you know it's not like you know you just come for one hour one and a half hours and then you know uh, you know uh, you uh, you know you you know want to forget everything so if there is if there are group if there are uh, you know youth that are you know in a sense move to a youth group and then you know the 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 life group is is predominantly just uh, you know the husband and the wife um yes of course you know that that will definitely be uh, you know quite you know husband and wife uh, centric uh, you know from a, from a topic and in perspective but as a family you know the adult is now the adult uh, youth is is a lot more um, you know uh, uh, you know exposed to so many other different things so they give a fresh perspective so i think it's also there's there's also a lot of plus points in having that having the youth um, having the adult youth uh, within that um, within that uh, group itself yeah. yes very true yes thank you so much christopher for adding that yes actually yes because for example like if if there's a 25 26 year old uh you know in this you know 20 you know you don't have to be 26 maybe within 25 as well uh and this happened i think in one of the life groups where uh you know this young boy this happened quite a quite a while back where this young boy was part of a family life group right uh, and the life group leader was, uh, you know, uh, in the workplace, right? So he uh, he was high up in the ranks in the workplace, and uh, you know he would share about how he went through these challenges, and that really encouraged this young boy. Uh, you know, he took it up as a challenge to start his own business and to start his own kind of. Uh, you know, he really got the practical help as well, but he was really encouraged. So um, I always wonder, what if he went to a youth group? And you know they were just talking about youth stuff. Maybe he wouldn't have had this kind of a, uh, you know, that, that kind of a mentoring thing happening. So, uh, and to add to that, Christopher, um, uh, this is something that we are also planning in 2023. Uh, we're starting something called as a mentoring program. Right now, it's not going to be, um, uh, you know, very, very, you know. Uh, guided in the sense that it's not going to be like okay uh we're going to do it it's going to be very informal it's not going to be in a very formal way very informal so if there are people so for example i'm at church i'll say hey i want to be mentored by uh, somebody in the workplace um, uh, and so uh, they can give us their names and their details and who they want what they are looking for and then as as a pastoral team we'll try and connect them to the right person and they can just you know mentor each other so that is something again just to try and help fill in the gaps this is something that we we haven't started yet but we are going to start this year so hopefully this will again help fill in the gaps in in terms of discipleship and mentoring so <clears throat> right yeah thank you so much any other questions any other thoughts all right so let's go to the notes All right, uh, now this is a little bit of a repeat, but we'll quickly just go over this. Uh, your cell church is your ministry team, right? So again, follow up with newcomers to your cell group, delegate responsibilities. Now, one of the things that we do at APC is, now when people come into church, 
uh, we have a three-step follow-up process. One is called the welcome call, where we call them. We say, hey, thank you so much for coming on Sunday. Hope you had a blessed time. We also try to find out uh, were they invited or did they go online and uh, how did they come to know about the church? Uh, that's something. And we also tell them, uh, you know, hope to see you the next week. So that happens usually on a Monday or a Tuesday. And then we have follow-up call one. Follow-up call one happens the next week on Monday. Right, so we 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 just uh, of course we do send a SMS reminder or a WhatsApp message regarding church deed, church uh, timings and all of that, timings and location. But on the next, the follow-up call one happens on Monday, and we call them and say, hey, uh, so we have this is Paul from APC. Uh, were you able to attend church yesterday? Right? And now remember that we are a big church, right? So there are many people we may not have met them or seen them on Sunday, or they may have just come and just you know gone away. So we call them and ask, hey, were you able to uh, attend church? Now, you may have two response. One, they may say, no, I could not come because I had some work. Say, so, okay, no problem. Uh, hope to see you the coming week. We, you can give them details about the, and the church and the timings and all of that, right? Or they may say, yes, uh, I came. Right Now, what is the first thing we do? We, we tell them, so that's wonderful. Uh, if you'd like to, you know, be part of a life group or a cell group, this is something that we have. You can go online. We have a list of life groups there. You can think of it, uh, and if you're interested, feel free to get back to me. Right. So you're just, you know, giving them an option. Then, at times, we have now follow up call three, two, is. You know, if we know that people are going to come, right? Usually, when we call them, we get an idea, right? They say, "Yeah, yeah, we will come. We we like the word. We like the worship." So we avoid the follow up call. I mean, we do the follow up call too, uh, but we avoid, you know, uh, giving too much of, you know, why don't you do this, this, this now? Say, okay, so that's wonderful. You're connected to the church. Feel free to, you know, uh, go to our website, look at the different events that we have. We have conferences. We have missions. So you can, you know, uh, so basically we give them some additional details about the church. We give them the website and then they can go online and look it up. So we, we try to do that three-step process. Now you can have this process in even for the cell groups, uh, but then you can have just a, uh, you know, one-time call or even a personal visit is something that you can do, right? So basically strategic uh, follow-up, right? Uh, uh, then you can uh, so just go down seed projects, right? Uh, we encourage cell leaders to take their cell members on seed projects. Now a seed project is organized, <clears throat> is organized and funded entirely by the cell group, and is usually com completed in one day. So it is basically a um, one day of ministry. Now the seed project could be visiting a life group, visiting a, a destitute home, children's home. Uh, doing a prayer walk, prayer drive, uh, you know, uh, just helping out people uh, in different communities. Now, you can do this alone with one cell group, or you can, two or three cell groups could join together, come together, and do this as a joint effort, right? Now, when two or three life groups come together, it's nice because it's a feeling of, hey, we are all one, you know, we're not having any competition. Uh, between each other. So you feel that oneness. And then you have outreaches, special evangelistic events that you can plan, usually revolving around Christmas and uh, you know Easter sometime that you can you know do that. And otherwise as well, you can have you know worship evenings, um, uh, you know, uh, additional workshops that you can do. So these are additional things. Right. And one of the things that we involve are uh, that we want from our cell group leaders is to involve themselves on in Sunday celebration. So many times, we, uh, you know, a lot of cell groups happen on Saturday evenings. So they have cell group, they close by about 10 o'clock, and sometimes they may not come on Sunday to church. So we tell them, hey, Sunday church is very important, and your presence there is, again, very important because you get to meet people, you get to talk to people, pray for people, um, and one of the things that we do, if you've noticed at uh, Central, is we do uh, invite our life group leaders to come in front and you know be available for prayer. And so people can come and 
you can have their prayer requests. So that way we're getting them involved in the ministry, not only in cell groups, but also in the church, right? Few pitfalls to avoid, right? First one, avoid shortcuts, right? Uh, you know, the moment we take a shortcut, you may feel it's a shortcut, but it may end up just going all the way around, right? There are no shortcuts to building a successful cell. It takes time, it takes effort, it takes dedication, it takes the right attitude to build a good, successful cell group. Right? Uh, you know, this morning I was I was just watching this with with my son. Um, you know, we watch this every morning. We watch these episodes called it's called Super Book, where we, you know, it talks about the Bible and uh, the stories in the Bible. It's a cartoon for for children to understand. So every day we watch one series and in this today's episode was you know about moses and how the israelites didn't follow rules because they didn't follow rules they were going around that mountain for so long right and they tried to do things on their own right and so so avoid shortcuts just just even if it's two three four people in the group lead the group in the right way right uh, you you may have this in mind okay i want to have this life group it should be a thriving life group but right now you just think you have two or three people have that vision in your mind but avoid shortcuts from reaching there one of the ways would be don't call up the other cell group uh, members and say hey why don't you come to my life group uh, you know we we have this we have that no don't don't do that right it's, we have one Avoid competitiveness with other cell group leaders. It's the work of the flesh. Now, remember this. Anything of the flesh will produce fleshly results. But what is of the spirit will, born of the spirit will be a bare fruit. Right? So avoid the things of the flesh. Just, just be there. Just do things because you love the Lord. Right, and because you want to do it, and because God has called you to do it, right? If other cell groups are thriving, doing you know many outreaches, many programs, you don't have to be jealous of them. Don't have to feel, hey, we are not doing anything. Work on it. You may be five people. Go ahead and do it, right? Nobody's going to say, hey, five people went on a cell on a outreach. What will those five? What impact can five people do? Five people can make an impact. It's not only about the impact, but it's about what you're teaching the life group members because they're going to watch. And one day they will become life group leaders. But if we are, uh, if we say, hey, it's okay, they will, when they start their cell group, they will say, hey, it's okay. Right? No, you, you're teaching them. Right? Uh, it's like how Jesus chose the 12, no? The 12 people. He didn't say, hey, there are thousands waiting. Why would I spend so much time with you, 12? No, he knew that this this was important. It was part of the process. Avoid careless appointing of leadership within the cell. Right now, this is very important. Uh, Kennedy also asked, "How will you choose the right person to, you know, uh, fill in for you?" Right. That's why you need to be careful. Right, uh, appointing a leader. Avoid using wrong motives for promotion. Right, like partiality don't compromise on leadership appointments so check with your uh, worship sorry check with your life group pastor check with your cell group members look at the person see whether they're growing in the lord whether they are growing in maturity give them opportunities give them small opportunities see if they're faithful in that then give them bigger opportunities right uh, don't let the cell groups become a mini church service. We talked about that. Watch out for people pursuing personal agendas. Right now, <clears throat> this is very, very important. Now, suddenly you may have a, a, a couple or a family come into your cell group. Right? Now they come in, ask them what you're doing, what, you, what have you been doing? Oh, we were in ministry for the past 20 years. So what are you doing now? Uh, we are still in the ministry, but uh, we're just waiting on the Lord to what to do next. Now, first thing is, I mean, they may have a good heart. They may have the right reasons for coming. But 
be careful right watch out uh, because it's 20 years here in ministry they suddenly stop and they're not doing anything all of a sudden right now what what could be an agenda you know it could be maybe now i'm not saying all of them right be starting an their own church taking all the cell members along or they they've been in ministry for 20 years so they are so used to talking they are so used to leading right? so they can't sit quiet so they'll come up with new doctrines new teachings new ideologies which uh, which can really cause disruption within the church and this is what happened in the church in Thessalonica, Thessalonica, right? What happened? Some people came in and said, there is no rapture. There is nothing. And so Paul writes this letter saying, no, there is. This is what happened. Look at the Galatian church. Okay, all this you're doing is good, but you also have to be circumcised. Right? Oh, so people, believers are going and getting circumcised. Paul was furious. He said, you, you Galatians, you're doing foolish things. because." You believed not by circum, not by obeying the law, but you believe because of the Holy Spirit. Uh, why are you going back to something of the flesh when you were born of the Spirit, right? Um, so be very careful on people who could be pursuing personal agendas. This happened many years back when, remember, I was in Manglo. We were a church of about a 30, 30 odd people at that time, 30, 35. Uh, now churches in Manglo especially were not wouldn't grow very fast, right? Especially the English speaking churches. Uh, the Canada, the uh, other regional languages were growing very fast. The English was not too fast. So it was it was the same for you know all the English churches in Manglo, they were probably about 100, 150 was like the biggest church. So we were growing, we were about 35. And I remember this. A uh, person came to our church. Now he came to our church, and he, uh, after service, I met with him. He said, "I'm a pastor. I've come from Punjab, and I'm relocated here to Mangalore. I'm just coming to see the different churches that are there uh, in the city, get a feel of the churches, and eventually, uh, you know, uh, just start something here." I, uh, as I was talking to him, I felt something was not right, but I just, you know, didn't say anything. But then the next Sunday, he came with a few pamphlets. The pamphlets was, uh, we have prayer in this place. Uh, it was a prayer you know, uh, meeting, so please join. So he said, is it OK if I can leave it on the book table? I looked at it, and I said, no. Don't put this on the book table. Right? Uh, now, he is, you know, has been uh, in ministry for many years. I, uh, but I said, no, don't. So he he probably felt offended. I said, no, because this, this is a church. You, right? He probably felt offended, but he did come the following Sunday. And then he spoke to our church members. He said, we are starting a new place. We are starting a new uh, prayer team. If you like to pray for the nation, if you have a heart to pray. So his target was praying more than, you know, uh, starting our own church. Now everyone liked to pray. Everyone liked to be part of praying in the you know city and nation and all these things, praying against persecution, all of these things. So he said, we are starting a prayer movement, chain prayers and all of that. So he had told our church folks to join in, right? Because I didn't allow him to put those pamphlets. Uh, but our church folks, thankfully, they came and told me. They said, Pastor, they, this person. He came and asked us to join the prayer, and we were not too comfortable as well uh, because we have 21 days of prayer. We have things, and we are part of this church. We don't want to go. I thank God for that, but I remember telling this person, so you, you've you come from Punjab, uh, but what you're doing is wrong. I gave him the book, Divine Order in the City White Church, and I said, please don't come back here. Go ahead. Start your ministry. You know, may the Lord bless you, use you greatly for his kingdom. You need any help in starting, you need any kind of you know assistance in a place. There are some of them who can help you in that. But don't come into church and you know try to you know just break the church or try 
because but the thing was our church was all full of youth and young people so they were all like you know no 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 we like this church we're going to be here uh but what he what was done was wrong so i asked him never to come not to come back again uh, uh not to connect with the church people again uh, and i gave him my number i said if you need any help feel free to call me but avoid calling the church members right? and avoid coming on sundays to church because if you're coming there should be the right reasons right so it was hard right uh, because he's a he's been in ministry for so long it uh, you know i felt bad because he's come here to do something good he wants to start a ministry and uh, he's got a family uh, we feel bad but then the church is more important right there's a way of doing certain things so uh, so yes as leaders we have to make those strong uh, hard decisions right uh, in the cell group people from other okay i think there's a, somebody who's raised their hands one second yeah uh, sorry who raised their hands christopher okay go ahead christopher ah uh, yes pastor i i just have, just have a question over here yeah, yeah. um uh, you know with um with so many churches that are that you know uh come up um i mean in bangalore for example i mean i think there are quite a few churches and i i, I guess across multiple cities i think there are a number of churches um uh besides what you have just mentioned are, are there any other sort of uh, pitfalls or any other uh um you know i, I don't want to use what tactics but you know that are used by 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 people who want to you know build uh build up their you know the, the the membership of their churches i mean are there any things that any other ones that you that you that you think are that are happening and uh because i know for example in in apc church uh, it is always mentioned in the, in the sunday sunday service that um uh you know when uh, there's an announcement made saying that you know if you belong to it to a different church then uh you know you, you, you can remain faithful to that church and only if you feel that you know god is be uh, you know bringing you to uh, to this church and you know once you do make this church your your home church then you know um, you know you should uh, consider it but um, but you are to make that announcement so i just want to understand are there any other any other, uh, any other sort of ways that people are using to build up their mem membership of their churches by getting people from from other churches basically yeah, yeah. not new members or not new new christians but from other churches yeah yeah so uh, yes very very good question uh, christopher so as you mentioned what we tell people is feel free to you know come back again if you're already part of a church be faithful there uh, if you looking for a home church come and join us and see if this is where god wants you to be planted so when we make our first time visitors call we tell them we ask them uh, are you part of the church uh, and if they say yes we don't even give them a follow up call right we just say visitor and we leave it now when people congregation people in the congregation decide to move to another church it is their choice right we we don't uh, you know have any we don't say okay don't go you should be here only or you know you've been here for 10 years how can you go uh, we don't know. we leave the choice to them they may want to go because, because we must understand that you know some of them like worship some of them like the word some of them like community some of them want discipleship some of them want mentoring some of them want uh, you know more events in the church they want the pastor to come home and pray every every week so th there are different needs or there are different styles of churches different ways that churches happen so if people within the congregation they decide to move we pray for them we bless them please uh, carry on uh, and we do take feedback right we it's not like okay you want to go go no we we take feedback what what is the reason that you want to go um, and then we they talk to the senior pastor and uh, get those things so but we don't hold them back right uh, so that way there are many people who have come and gone but when it comes to pastors and leaders then because it's like you know you're you're forcing people within the church to come so what i mentioned was one way a second way is through life groups cell groups right uh, they come into the cell groups right they 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 start you know 
uh, saying, you know, I was in ministry. They'll probably bring their photos, some photos of all the, you know, evangelistic meetings that they have done. And they start showing it to people or they may bring pamphlets with them. You know, this is my ministry. Just uh, pray for it. There was this other time somebody had come with a small box, offering box. Uh, uh, he came with an offering box. He said, uh, this is my ministry. Uh, you can give. Uh, and the life group leader called me and said, he, what do we do? I was so upset. I was really upset with what happened. I said, give me that person's number. And, you know, uh, I did. I was quite stern, but uh, I made sure that he didn't come back again to that life group. Uh, now, it sounds rude, right? It sounds like, hey, how can you? Uh, but I'm looking at the 12 people. Who are there in the life group, right? And you can't come with some other pamphlet saying I'm in ministry with a box saying give your offering there. You can't do that in a cell group. Uh, I mean, the cell group is meeting for a reason, right? And you can't just do whatever you feel like. Uh, um, uh, and, and so we had to make that hard decision. Another way is through now with Zoom. You know, people are, you know, uh, they may be part of our ch part of a church, but they're connecting with different things that are happening around, which is all right, right? Uh, but now people can use even that, you know, this is our online uh, thing. Why don't you come? Some of the other methods are the prophetic word. Hey, my pastor is not giving any prophetic word. I will give you a prophetic word. Tell me. And then they will give five, six prophetic words in one day just to, you know, feel them get them feel excited or there's you know miracles that they'll pray for uh now the thing is they can use all these things they, they may be the gifts of the holy spirit but through them getting them to you know enticing them and trying to draw them towards themselves is is wrong but if god uses a minister of god to give a prophetic word let God be glorified. Whether it's or if it's healing, let God be glorified. But saying, hey, because I've prayed for you, because you have got the prophetic word, because I gave you, prayed for your healing, uh, now you come to this church. And that would be wrong. So these are some of the ways that... Uh, and it usually, uh, Christopher, I would say, in, in cities, in urban cities, uh, nowadays it's not much because nowadays people are you know, more open. They just say, okay, you, you want to stay? Stay good. If you're going, let us know what the reason is. Feel free to go. So urban churches have become that way. But when you look at um, towns, uh, smaller towns, smaller cities, and uh, uh, in especially you look at North India, it's it's a big problem, right? People do that, uh, uh, and it becomes a whole contention. There's fights, and uh, and so we need to be wise in this way, right? So. So those are some other ways, a right? prophetic word, a word of knowledge, or they'll come home for prayer. Suddenly they'll drop in for prayer. This happened to me many, many years back where uh, there was this pastor. Uh, he was around our locality. He had a church. And he had a Kannada church, right? So uh, a regional church. So uh, it's a small gathering. But during Christmas time, how he got to know was he saw all the houses which has stars outside. So he knows they're Christians. So there's a star Christmas time, there's a star. So he would go to every house that has a star. So of course, my house had a star, unfortunately. And he came home and he began to say, okay, this is what God can do. This so, okay, respect them. You know, Jesus said, if you give water to man of God, you'll be honored and all of that. So I said, okay. Give him water, give him juice, gave him, did all that. And he started to preach. And he's preaching. And then he said, okay, thank you so much for coming. Merry Christmas. He said, okay, bye. He came the next day. He came, started coming every day. Now I have work. Right? And I said to him, see, please stop coming. They're already part of a church. And my I'm more comfortable in English than Canada. No uh, you know, no hard feelings. Don't feel bad. He's an elderly pastor. Right? Don't feel bad. Uh, it's not that I don't want you to come. It's just that I have other things to do. And also, you know, uh, English is my main language. So I may not understand many words that you're saying. Uh, no, but you're Kanadiga. Yeah, but I don't understand. 
uh, and he felt really offended. Right? He said, you, you know, he saw the guitar and the keyboard in my house. He said, you come and play guitar in my church one day. We want to see your English worship. I said, I said, this is a Canada church. If I come and do English, so who's going to relate to it? Nobody's going to relate to it. I said, no, I won't come. You know, so people can use these, you know, house visits and all that too. So one thing we do is we avoid house visits you know, unless it's really needed. You know, people who are, of course, during bereavement, people who have lost their loved one, we go, we have a prayer or there's a house dedication. There's certain things we go, but we avoid, you know, going for these house visits on a regular basis so so uh, yeah, just to confirm pastor uh, uh for for epc church uh the cell group is is uh, is only for people who are attending the epc church right is that correct or uh, am i have i missed something there no so christopher it's open to everyone right they can come but they are only going to discuss what happens on sunday so we inform them earlier itself. So for example, if I'm uh, in the youth group, life group, right? Uh, there are 12 of us, 10 of us in the life group, for example. And I say, hey, my friend from workplace, he wants to come. Now he may be a believer or an unbeliever, right? So if I know I'm going to invite this person, one thing I tell him is, see, this is what we're going to discuss. That's not going to change. We'll have worship, we'll have this thing, this, uh, the word, and this is a discussion is going to be that's not going to change you're free to come right uh so yeah christopher it's open right it's open to people but we don't change the agenda on what uh, on the life group whatever whatever we are planning to discuss all that doesn't change right uh but it's open yeah, it's open for people right. okay all right i think we've uh uh almost finished our time but it was good good discussion uh shall we just try and finish this let me just check right yeah. oh no there's a lot of points okay we'll stop here and uh we'll pick up from next week right uh just make a note of that so pitfalls to avoid right we'll pick up from there from the fifth point out right Thank you so much. It was a good time of discussions. Uh, let's keep this, uh, you know, this class especially. Let's continue to have more discussions, more questions. Um, and I enjoy, you know, uh, when it's two ways and rather than just one way. Right? Thank you so much. Have a great week ahead. I'll see you next Tuesday. God bless you all. God bless. Bye.